Good morning. Will you rise in body and spirit and join me for the opening hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for gathering us here this morning as we worship in your name this morning. We ask this so graciously in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church Los Angeles on this last Sunday of Lent and a beautiful Sunday morning on top of that. I'd like to take a moment to extend a welcome to any of our first-time visitors this morning. If you're worshiping with us for the first time and you feel comfortable in raising your hand, we'd like to acknowledge you this morning and just give you some information about Founders MCC. Looks like everybody's home folk this morning. That's a great thing. I'd like to welcome our online worshipers this morning, and we have worshipers that worship with us throughout the world each Sunday through the Internet, and we welcome you, and we welcome you to join us in worship this morning. I want to take a few moments to just to highlight a few announcements in your bulletins this morning. I do uh, strongly suggest taking them home. There is lots of information that is not announced from the pulpit each week. Um, also in your bulletins this morning, before I forget, there, there's a few inserts, but one I just want to point out, which is a trifold, and it happens to be all of the uh, moderator candidates for the moderator's position for our denomination at General Conference in July. Our lay delegates have uh, so graciously put that together for you to look through, and then at one point as we get closer to conference, they'll come together with you and decide who you want to be your next moderator uh, for the denomination. Kids Club is ready to start, and I'm happy to say that next Sunday, March 20th, at the 11 o'clock hour, this hour that our Kids Club will resume in the Rosa Parks room, but I want to say if you're a parent, a grandparent, an uncle or an aunt, or even a godfather like myself, that we welcome you to come this afternoon after this service to the Rosa Parks Room and meet with Dean Coffey to learn about the organizational structure of Kids Club, but also where you can fit in volunteering and teaching our children and be that treasure in the ministry that we have with our children. Holy Week is just a week away. Can you believe that we start next Sunday? Um, you're invited to check the details for Holy Week from Palm Sunday to Easter in your bulletin. There also will be a special e-blast going out this week with the same details in it. So either is a good source to see what we're doing from Palm Sunday all the way to the resurrection. But I want to make sure that you really join us next Sunday for Palm Sunday as we recreate the excitement into the sanctuary with a grand procession that we will start out front on the sidewalk and process into the sanctuary 
bringing in the palms as Jesus came into Jerusalem on the donkey. But also you don't want to miss because next Sunday we will welcome our interim pastor, Reverend Kevin Downer, as the new interim pastor here at Founders. And also during the week, please join me and the staff as we keep Reverend Kevin and his husband Toby in prayer as they start journeying from Toronto here to Los Angeles. Also take note that in your bulletins there is a form for Easter lilies. Next Sunday, Palm Sunday, is the last Sunday to order lilies. You can do them through the form. You can get forms from the ushers. And you can also call the church office if you wish to order during the week. I invite you now to rise as you're able and greet one another as we continue with worship this morning. morning. Our scripture reading today is taken from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil, shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? God has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Hear what the Spirit says today. Troubles there. 
know that I can stand. I know that I can stand. No matter what makes no my mind. of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight God you are our strength you are our redeemer Amen the Israelites had broken faith with God and instead of accepting their own responsibility they believed God had wronged them and they asked God why have you treated us so unfairly we ask God questions like that. One that I remember is, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Why did God let my mother have cancer? She was always at the church working and doing things, never smoked any cigarette. Why? God asked them, and God is asking you, to prove just one time when your complaints were not met. Instead of proving God had been unfaithful to them, Michael referred to righteous acts when God saved them from the attacks of the Egyptians. And God provided them with safe paths through the Red Sea. When God sent them Moses and Aaron, gifted leaders to their church, gave them apostles and prophets and prophets and teachers, Israel rebelled just as our churches today rebel against our spiritual leaders. So now they want to come back. They want a relationship with God. And they are offering up to God all of these absurd gifts that you heard read off. Well, what shall I come before the sorrow? How do I bow myself before God on high? Shall I come with burnt offerings? Shall I come with calves of one year old? Will my sovereign be pleased with a thousand rams? Will my father be happy with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn high absurd, the first of my body, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? What shall I come with, God? What do I have? That's good enough. Ah. Mahalia Jackson asked, what can she give? And she went on to say, as poor as I am. Tamala Mann, another gospel singer, take me to Jesus. She confessed she didn't have much to give. If God wanted a heart, all she had was a broken and torn up one. But she'd offer it, that's all she had. Hallelujah. Some people think God's favor is much like their own favor. It can be bought or it can be earned. We sometimes extend our kindness to one another because someone has done or said something to earn our favor. In turn, those people wrongly believe that they can offer God false sacrifices and meaningless worship. When Israel asked what was God's requirement, how can we renew our relationship with you? In Micah 6, 8, God has told you, it says, I have told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. God does not desire meaningless worship. God does not want God's people to just throw the, the notions of doing church. 
God's answer to what God requires of us. Act justly does not mean to talk about it. Love mercy and to walk humbly with God. When what God asks for or is required is our love, our fairness, our obedient hearts, what God does not demand of us or require is some empty rituals, playing church every Sunday, and then living like people of the world the rest of the week. When I was a kid, just a few days, a <laughs> little while back, a little while back, okay, there was a gospel singer. Many of you may not know her. Some of you might be old enough to know her, but some of you were not even born. Her name was Sister Rosetta Thorpe. She was a guitar Pentecostal singer. And she says, we can't go to church, this was her song, all day Sunday and come back home and raise hell all day Monday. <laughs> You've got to live the life you sing about in your soul. God desires holiness in our lives and in our hearts and to follow in his word. My text, Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, you may say God is talking to the Jews, but at times it is our story as well. We are uneasy and we ask whether we have given enough of ourselves to God. Our immediate urge is to relieve it, that uneasiness that Micah offered rams and calves and all. But you know what we offer? Beautiful sanctuaries, expensive church campuses, creative liturgies, numerous church programs. Whether we are motivated by devotion or motivated by fear, those tributes are absurd and they do not satisfy God. Michael is exposing Israel's wrong attitude. They saw sacrifice as their entry fee to God. God doesn't want our offerings. God wants the allegiance and the obedience of us. God wants not the offering but the offerers as a sign that we see sometime on the road where Uncle Sam has a sign calling me into the army. says, Uncle Sam wants you. I'm here to tell you this morning, God wants you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When when uh, Micah asked the question for the people, what did God want? And he told them justice and love, love mercy, not have it, just love mercy. And then to walk home justly. Let's take the first one, to act justly. Like I said, it does not mean talking about justice. It doesn't mean to get other people to act justly. It means to do the right thing yourself. Amen. Oftentimes we focus on what we think other people ought to do. <laughs> how they have treated us. How they need to act justly. God's word calls us to inspect ourselves. Inspect our lives. And for us to do what is right in our life. Sometimes what is right is not easy. Sometimes what is right is not even desirable. And many times we may have to put aside our desires and take and think of others. Now this is the hard part. More highly than ourselves. And that's Romans 12, 3. That's not Barbara. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. 
What God requires of us is that we do what is right and fair in our relationships with other people. Justice involves a sense of standard of equality among people. It can be as simple as being honest and even the smallest routine business transactions. In Micah, the prophet complained about the persons who dishonest scales with a bag of false weights. A policy for us Christians in our honesty is the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. But for us, we have to remember this. It might be the best, but for us, us Christians, I got some here, I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only, the only policy. <clears throat> Love, mercy, show constant love. Oh, that is so hard. Some translations render it love kindness. Some say love faithfulness. But my translation in the Life Application Bible says love mercy. Show constant love refers to our loyalty to God. It has to be a God thing. People can get on your last nerve. <laughs> so to love God faithfully, but it also implies steadfast love and kindness with our, with, with our toward one another. Jesus told his disciples, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Walk humbly with God. Not going my own way, but doing what God's way tells me to do, what God desires. It's another hard one. It's very difficult to do for many of us. How many times have you said, uh, in your heart, or you heard somebody else say it, I pay the cost to be the boss. <laughs> you know, so I, you, you're not going to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I am the choir director. I say what we're going to sing. <laughs> I am the hospitality leader here. I asked you to bring that, and that's what I want. <laughs> How many conflicts like that are started in churches because somebody was trying to control the outcome of something else? Amen. As Christians, we have to be careful. We hurt each other. We say words that harm and hurt for a long time. Words are important. God started all of this that we are on right here. He spoke a word, yes. and it was done. Yes. Oceans were made. Skies were created. Grounds were made solid. Words, be careful how we speak words to one another. <laughs> humbly, humbly with God in our walk. Faithfully showing justice and obediently loving mercy. In closing, Micah's points that our outward forms of religion should reflect our inner relationship with God. I looked at that. And we as Christians, we consider God as our parent. Our Abba Father, we call him. That's our parent. And so if God is our parent, Michael is telling us that some kind of way you got to favor your daddy. If that's your pappy, you got to look a little like him somewhere. You're either going to walk like him, you're going to talk like him, you're going to reach out like him, some kind of way. Somebody is going to know 
God is your pattern. They're going to know it some kind of way. Well, I must bring us into this. You say that was to the Jews. God was not talking to the Christians. No, because Jesus hadn't come yet. But he had been promised to them, and they refused him. So our gospel is still true. Jesus Christ is still our Savior. And it's still through him and only him that we are declared right with God. What Michael wrote here should be the natural consequences of people who have been saved by the grace of God and have been forgiven of their sins. Treating one another fairly, loving each other faithfully, doing the things that God desires should merely be a natural outflow of a changed life in Christ. So ask yourselves, treating each other justly, loving each other mercifully, walking humbly with God. It should be a natural overflow of a changed life. Are we growing through justice? Is there evidence of a life-changing faith in your life, in my life? Am I harboring resentment and unforgiveness to others? Am I unrepentant of some sin or some word that I might have spoken, that I might have hurt someone? Do I extend mercy and grace to others just as God extended it to me? Am I willing to be at peace with my sisters, with my brothers, regardless of what is necessary? What does God want from us? Not much. Not really. Just to act justly. To love mercifully. And to walk humbly. Maybe you came here today. We don't know. We didn't see any hands of visitors. Maybe you've been coming a long time. And you haven't decided if Jesus can be that right relationship to get you back to where you've drifted from. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe you used to be a member in, in this fellowship for a long time. Somebody hurt you. Somebody said the wrong words. And nobody else reached out. I'm offering you that opportunity right now. I'm offering you an opportunity to forgive them. You don't have to get up. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to stand out. You can do it right where you are. Just ask God to come into your heart and forgive you and forgive them. And forgive founders. Forgive L.A. Forgive MCC churches, wherever they may be. They might have hurt you. But we come here with Jesus Christ, who has offered you that chance to open up and forgive and let him come into your heart. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Oh, oh, the ground is sinking sand. Oh, oh, the ground is sinking 
sand My hope is built On nothing less Than Jesus' blood And righteousness I dare not trust The sweetest frame But I wholly lean on Jesus' name. Sing it on Christ, on Christ, on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock, rock I stand. Thus come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Christ be found, dressed in God's right justness alone, faultless to stand before.
as the ushers have come forward this morning, I wanted to just take a minute just to say thank you. <coughs> thank you for blessing us with your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Either virtually or in person. Your steadfastness is noticed and appreciated. Thank you for your participation in the daily operations and ministries of this church. We couldn't do it without you. The financial gifts that you provide at this time will assure that all those who rely on us and all those that we continue to, for all those programs to continue to be here in times of need, in times of joy, and in times of celebration. Thank you for who you are and for what you do. It's noted and appreciated. Amen.
Will you pray with me, please? Our God, our healer, our lover, our mercy, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the givers. And we thank you for the good works that you will allow us to do because of these gifts. In your precious name, always and forever. Amen. 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 At this time, I'd like to invite those of you who are with us today on the internet to join us for communion by gathering your own juice or water and, and crackers or bread. <coughs> Loving God, you continue to call us to be fruitful servants. As we offer ourselves to you, knowing you have sculpted all people in your image. Help us as we take up your invitation with prayer and simplicity, and that our discipline during this time of Lent may sharpen our hunger for the feast of your holy friendship and wet our thirst for the living water you offer us through Jesus Christ. We pray that your love will prevail in all that we say and do. May from all that we have inherited from you, may your blessings be shared with each of us as we sing the prayer taught to us by Jesus. God makes no distinction between us. We are all children of the one true God. We are all precious in the eyes of God, and we are all in need of God's love and grace. Because God is so impartial and all loving, we are able to confess our common humanity to the one who is generous to all. So please join me in a moment of silence. Let us pray together the community prayer of forgiveness. Loving God, we offer you our lives full as they are of shadow and light, of kindness and indifference, of hope and despair. Take what is broken and make it whole. Take what is wrong and make it right. Help us to overcome that which is destructive Help us to see what is good and make it useful. Forgive us and renew us. Help us to grow in your grace. Amen. The good news is that we are more than conquerors. Through God, 
who loves us. We are sheltered in God's gracious mercy and hope. With the promises of Christ in our hearts, we give thanks to God, who is our joy and our peace. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and joyful and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O God, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. For you have given us life and hope by your spirit. For once we were no people, but now we are your people. Amen. From worlds apart and age to age, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcomed us home. Yes. Always your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your eternal name. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts you provide of bread and the fruit of the vine, let the bread we break and the cup we bless speak to us of the presence of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who follow the way, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ, a body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. On the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered his disciples. And taking bread, he blessed it. He broke it and saying, take and eat, for this is my body which will be broken for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you Eat of this, simply remember me. Likewise, following the meal, he took a cup from the table. He blessed it, and he said, This is the cup of salvation. My blood poured out as a seal to the new covenant. Drink of this often, and do so in remembrance of me. Please join us in prayer. As we are fed by the bread, may we become as generous as you, making no distinction as to who we will serve. As the cup nourishes us with your life, may we be poured out for others, feeding those who are hungry, joining the voices of the powerless, and offering our lives in grace and hope to all. And when we gather at last where you dwell, we will celebrate the great feast of your love and grace, joining our sisters and brothers in praising you forever. Amen. Here at Founders MCC, as in MCCs all over the world, we celebrate an open communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or of any church to receive communion in this home. In this house of God, a prayer for all people. You are welcomed just as you are. 
In just a few moments, the ushers will guide you to come forward to communion. And if you are new to Founders MCC, information about receiving communion is provided and printed in the bulletin which you received at the beginning of worship. So as we finish preparing the table, I'd like to invite the acolytes, the ushers, and the servers to please join us for the feast has been prepared and all are welcome to receive. Amen.
So as we take a little justice in our hearts this morning, let us take the same justice back out into the world each and every day as we go into the world. So as we go into the world this day, may we go out into the world in the name of God our Savior, God our Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Please remain standing as we end with our closing song. Thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry. Wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. Please connect with us and interact with us by telephone, email, or social media. Be an angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donation link. With your help, we expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. We invite you to write to us so we can be in prayer and praise with you. You are a part of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Email us directly, info at mccla.org. May God bless you.